realistic looking masking fluid? Is it even possible? That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Michelle. On this channel, you'll find all things watercolour, including drawing, mixed media, even a bit of business and motivation for artists too, all drawn from my experience of working and teaching in the real world in the art industry over the last three decades. Please do consider subscribing. If you click that little bell icon, you'll get notified every time I have a new video for you. I make at least one free video a week here on YouTube with extra content for Patreon subscribers. So the more observant of you may have noticed that there's a painting sitting over here on my mantelpiece and it's one that I've just finished. It was a Patreon tutorial. I may even put it out as a mini course in the future. We'll see about that. And it's a painting of Whitby Abbey in North Yorkshire. If you are a fan of the book Dracula, you will know that this location is featured in the book. Now, what we're looking at today is foreground grasses. So scenes where you have grasses in the foreground like this one, which obviously is a sunset, but it happens in the daytime too, which are lighter than the background. It can be a really tricky thing to achieve. Masking fluid seems to be the obvious option, but it can look really, really unnatural. So what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna show you actual footage of me painting this painting. Painting the painting, is that a thing? It must be, I just said it. And I'm gonna take you through three stages. This is an underwash because we're not going on white paper. How to actually apply the masking fluid in a way that looks realistic, and this is where most people go wrong. And then how to work on top of the area afterwards. And keep watching until the end because I've got three additional tips that are going to help you get realistic looking masking fluid. So you're looking at a painting that I'm doing for my Patreon subscribers of Whitby Abbey. I'll put a picture up at the end so you can see how it turned out. We're going to concentrate on the foreground grasses. So let me show you the photograph I'm working from. So you see we have all these light grasses in the foreground here. Now this often happens in landscapes, not just sunset landscapes, but there are often lighter grasses at the front and indeed scattered through the picture. So I am going to use a little bit of masking fluid, but what we're going to do first is we're going to put these light areas in. We're going to mottle the colour slightly at each level. We're not going to just paint with a pre-mixed colour or a colour we mix and pop it on. We're going to put multiple colours in so that we get through the whole thing, we get a variation of hues through each part of the painting that's going to help it look more realistic we're also not just going to put a load of light paint at the front and leave a hard edge so what I'm going to show you now is how to put these light areas in and leave a soft edge to them that's going to enable us to work them up further in more stages and apply masking fluid and not end up with a straight line where we put that light paint later on showing through the other colors you'll be amazed how much that stuff shows so the colour I'm going to be using here with adjustments is this colour here. This is chrome oxide green. But you could use any colour at all that you water down to be light enough. And of course you can mix your own. I'm going to also use some of the other colours that I'm using within this tutorial. So I've got this yellow here that I can use to adjust this green. If I want to cool it down, I've got this pink here. So this is quinacridone rose and the colour I've got here is azo yellow. Now if you put pink into green, you will cool it down and push it more towards those neutral colours that we see. Look at that, look how close that is to the colour that we've got. Now do remember that although we're working light colours here, this is actually a sunset. So if you contrast the tone of the lightest areas here with the white paper, it's still fairly dark, it's still fairly mid-toned. So just bear that in mind, if you're doing a summer picture, you may need to go a little lighter. So I've popped lighter areas in at the back here. Now we're going to work on this main area at the front and we need to soften the pencil lines that I've drawn. So these were just lines that indicated roughly where these light grasses were going. And if I leave too much of the pencil on the paper, it's going to be quite noticeable. It may show through. You'd be amazed how it shows through even quite dark layers. Next, we're not going to mess around here. I've got a great big brush and I'm taking this clean water up to and past the area where I want the paint to sit. This will ensure the paint sits with a soft edge, not a hard edge. Now I am infringing on some areas I've just painted which may still be slightly damp. What may happen is the water may push up and give bleed lines, but actually that's gonna look just like grassy, so I'm not even slightly worried about that. And just applying water to this whole front section. It's very warm here in the UK today, so it may be that I need to re-wet as I work across, but that's okay and I'm gonna start out applying some green. Now look how dark that's gone on, but actually once it hits the water and we start to spread and mix with other colors, and remembering as well that watercolor paint 
tends to dry a lot lighter than you apply it. Pop some yellow in just to give it a bit of interest. It's going to be absolutely fine. And of course, I've already mentioned the fact that this area is not as light as you may originally assume, simply because everything in a sunset is dark compared to the sun itself and the light areas of the sky. So don't be afraid just to chuck colours on. Of course, that's way too bright. So what do we do? I'm going to get some of this lavender colour here and just drop it on top. Or you can use pink. And we start to just neutralise any areas that are a bit too bright and get that really natural look. It's a little too much water here. Everything's kind of running. So what I've got is a piece of paper towel and I'm just going to sweep some of the water out here. I'm just going to go a little darker in places simply because it is a sunset and we need to make sure it's not too pale. Keep your marks horizontal and then if any drying lines do appear, they're going to be horizontal and that's going to help with the overall idea of it being a flat landscape. And you see how we have a multitude of colours here. This colour in a minute is going to end up being the lightest part of our painting. We're going to reserve some grasses in here. Do you see I've got one or two things sort of stuck on the paper here, little bits of eraser or something like that. Don't worry about things like that, just pick them off when they're dry. This whole area is going to be textured grass, so I'm not even slightly worried about splatters, brush hairs or anything else that's on the paper at the moment. So we've done our underwash and we've let it get completely dry. Now comes the tricky bit, applying the masking fluid. And this is where people tend to go wrong. They tend to just apply the masking fluid in a very sort of haphazard way. But honestly, you should be applying the masking fluid as carefully as you applied any other stroke with a paintbrush or pencil. If you just roughly stick it on and do some upright lines, it's going to look exactly as you apply it. And that is not very good. Masking fluid is very good at leaving accurate, crisp edged marks. And this is both its strength and its weakness. It's great because it works really well, but also if you don't apply intentionally and artistically, your errors are going to be very, very clear. So let me show you a couple of tools and techniques that I use for getting a really, really realistic result. So at this point, the foreground of my painting is dry. In fact, I left it all weekend and it's been a heat wave here in the UK. So very, very dry indeed. I've got my masking fluid. I've given it a little bit of a swirl. The coloured ones, you tend to get a little bit of the sort of the dye stuff sits at the bottom. Don't shake your masking fluid. You'll get too many bubbles for it to apply nicely. I've got a little dish to pour it into. This is really helpful. You can use an egg cup or one of those little plastic cartons that you get sauces in from the takeaway. Wash it first, obviously. You don't want sweet and sour on your paper. I've got this to apply it with. This is a embossing tool. So if you have seen my other video, do have a look at the video I did. Let me put it against the white so you can see how it looks. Do have a look at the video I did that was uh, testing out different applicators. I found this one worked best, but you could also use a ruling pen or an old fashioned dip pen or really anything that works for you. But have a look at that video. It'll give you some ideas. I'm going to do a tiny bit of splattering. Now, most of you know that I hate splattering with a passion. At least do I. I hate splattering with a passion when it's just splattering for splattering's sake. To produce texture, it's a great technique. I'm going to do a little splattering down the bottom here. I'll need to mask the top part of my paper off so that it doesn't go over everything. The last thing I've got on hand is this water jar. Now, as soon as I have finished with that toothbrush, which is a toothbrush I keep just for masking fluid, I'm going to dump it in this water. That'll rinse some of it off. I won't get it perfectly clean, but if I allow that masking fluid to dry, that toothbrush will never be able to be used again. And it goes without saying, of course, don't use this water for your paintings. At this point in the video, can I quickly interject and ask you, could you just do me a favour and press that like button, please? YouTube rewards channels with audience interaction. So if you like, share, subscribe, or leave me a comment, YouTube will push this video out to more people. I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers at the moment. I'm so grateful to all of you who watch me on YouTube. And now let's get back to today's subject. So let's talk about the best way of applying masking fluid so it looks natural. I see so many people just grab the masking fluid, do a load of straight lines, and it just looks so unnatural. So I want you to apply the masking fluid intentionally. In other words, as carefully as if you were painting these little grasses. It's really that important. Now I've got two ends on this tool. I've got a smaller end and a bigger end. So what I'm doing is I'm using the smaller end for these pieces that are further away. It's important to go upwards and outwards because the line will taper just as if you were drawing with a pencil or a paintbrush. And so you need to go up with these lines. If there's anywhere you get too much masking fluid or you spill masking fluid, I'm actually filming 
the rest of this tutorial for Patreon and I did spill my masking fluid in a big puddle and I've removed it. So if that happens to you, for goodness sake, don't scrub at it and push it into your paper. Just leave it alone until it's dry and then peel it off. And we're going upwards and outwards. Remember that grasses naturally cross. They don't all grow in the same direction. And then as I come down here to the foreground, I'm going to change to the thicker end and I'm going to start applying thicker parts. Now, although there are some very light grasses right up in the distance next to the abbey, we're not going to use masking fluid up there because just like a photograph that blurs the distance, that's how our eyes work. Things that are further away become smaller and more blurry and things that are in the foreground have a little bit more weight. You see how this is getting a bit gunked up. So I've just got some paper towel here and I can just clean that up as I go along. If you get anywhere that's got too much in, you can just, you know, spread that further if you want to. Now this is time consuming. It's going to take a long while to apply this masking fluid, but actually you're just moving time saving down the road because if you were to paint all of this without the masking fluid, even if that were possible, it would take you just as long. So by putting plenty of masking fluid on here and being very intentional about how we apply it so that it looks natural, and you see how I'm sort of getting this idea in places of these little grass heads. We'll get more of that in a moment with the splattering. By being very intentional and putting lots on, we'll save time later on. So what I've done now is I've masked off the areas I don't want to get splatter on. And what I've done is I've made sure I've got a torn edge. This is very important. You don't want to end up with something like this with a cut edge in place because where the splatter stops is going to be noticeable. The shape isn't too much of a bother. Just make sure that everything that you don't want splatter on, like all the sky and the building is covered and that these edges here are torn and in some kind of wiggly shape. And that will ensure that you get a natural look. And then we're going to just splatter so you're going to splatter along the top really of the grasses and I'll do the same down here as well so where we would have these things at the top like this if you haven't splattered before what you want to do is make sure that you're pulling your thumb backwards like this and pointing down at the paper the splatter will go forwards as long as you are pulling your finger backwards if you can't physically do this because of arthritis or something like that, you can get a non-sharp knife blade and just point your brush at the paper and drag the knife blade backwards and that will have the same effect. And then you can also actually paint with this brush. So what we can do is we've got areas down the base where we might want a little bit of uh, more light areas. We can start getting some random shapes in like this. Do be careful with this. Don't scrub at your paper or drag the brush across because it could lift up previously dried masking fluid. Now I am in places, you know, just very, very gently taking the toothbrush in upward marks, but being very careful not to press so hard that I'm lifting up those previous areas. You always want to default to these upward marks if you can, remembering that, of course, you are doing grasses. So that's the tricky bit done, that's the masking fluid applied. But how can we apply our paint to continue with this idea of realism? Let me show you how it's done. So I'm starting to paint the foreground and I've bought some wet paint down here. That's not part of this tutorial, but I just wanna show you this bit because what I'm doing here is I'm dropping this darker color in here because we need those light grasses to be highlighted and to show up. Now by using very wet paint, it will bleed up into the wet areas that are starting to dry because wet paint goes into damp and will bleed upwards, which is gonna make this look like things are growing. It's gonna give us that depth of color to show up all of these light areas that we made with the masking fluid. So you can see I've been working this area over on the right here, so let me show you what I'm doing start with a bit of clean water here because I want a soft edge where it goes over the front of this lake area and then going in with some yellow don't worry if you get these sudden bright colors they're going to dull down once you put other colors on I'm using a little of this color here this is called winter bark it's from my shadow set of colors the closest one that you might have would be sepia as I said though there are many different colors that you could use for this now I want to get a line of light grasses here, which means I need to go dark behind. So I'm actually using a black here, but it's not a pure black. I would never put a pure black on here. What I'm using is something called perylene black. 
green shade. It's the most stunning gothic colour. I'm going to use it to get drama behind those light grasses. Just get a little more green up here. It's a little bit too bright there. Once this layer's dry, we're going to put some upward strokes in, in some darks. But for now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to continue down to the front using the green. And I've got this lavender colour here that's also being used in the painting. But a pink would work just as well to cool the green down and make it a little bit grey. It's going to fill in this whole area now. So we're at the stage now where it's all very wet and um, I'm going to do what I always do, let it dry. So I'm going to go and do something else. This is going to take a significant amount of time to get fully dry. I'll probably leave it for a couple of hours. So this is completely dry now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of the mid-tone green and I'm actually going to go in upward strokes. So we're going to get that idea of grasses and then Towards the base of these areas, I'm going to drop in some dark. So let me show you how to do that. So, so take this in here and I'm just going to sweep up like this. And although I'm going on top of the masking fluid, because the masking fluid is reserving those areas, it will look afterwards as if I've gone behind. You can vary the colour here. I'm going on a very dark area here, so you won't see too much of this part. And then as I come down to the base, I can go in and I'm going in with my brownish colour here. There are always darks towards the base of areas. I'm going to pop some in like this. I don't want these strange hard edges at the bottom here. So again, I'll just take some clean water across and I'll work the bottom area in the same manner. We're going on a lighter part here so you can see that we can see these a little bit more. See, I'm sweeping them up just randomly. Because it's near the front, I can go in with some yellow as well if I want to. We'll go in with this lilac colour, which will just turn to grey as it hits the other colours. And then again, I'm going to put some darks in down here and come right down to the bottom. Like so. So it's time to remove our masking fluid, but we're not done yet. We're going to put some extra paint on top. And if there are any areas that look a little bit unnatural, this is where you're going to correct them. At this stage, I'm going to remove the masking fluid. Now I'm going to be careful not to go anywhere that's still slightly wet. For instance, up here by the water where I've been painting, I'm only going to work on dry areas. I'll wait till this area is completely dry before I remove. My favorite tool for removing masking fluid is a firm eraser like this one. And you're just going to make little circular motions. Once the masking fluid is all removed, we'll have a look and see if these areas need knocking back a little bit. They may be too light tonally or the masking fluid may have removed some of the pigment. So it may be necessary just to pop a little bit of a light neutral colour on top. But I'll decide once I've taken off the rest of the masking fluid. So whilst I'm very happy with these results and we've got a nice variation of colour showing through, it's still looking a little unnatural. So what we can do is we're going to drop some lights on top, not to make these particularly darker, but just to give more variation in the tone. So I've got my yellow here and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mix it and I'm going to, I'll do most of this off camera because obviously there's a risk of dripping. Do not mix your stuff on top of your work like this. What you'll do is you'll just start to make somewhat of a watery colour. That's a little dark. I can add more water to it. I can add more yellow to it. I can do various variations. I can do some like this and some like this. What we're going to do is go over the whole painting and just in places, I'm going to drop this across the light areas, particularly if you've got anywhere like this one here that's just looking a little bit blobby. You know, we can start to break those areas up. So I've gone across with some of those lighter colours. I've now mixed more of a bright yellowish green and I'm just taking this across as well in order to get more variation. Make sure you use lots of water in these mixes. You don't want to cover up all the lights that you reserved with the masking fluid, but the trick here is just to keep layering. We're trying to avoid that thing where you look at it and go, oh, they used masking fluid. And if you're curious to see the finished painting, here it is. Paint's still wet, got a few pencil marks to clean up yet. I'll also put it up on Instagram and Facebook if you need a better look. 
at the beginning of this video, I promised you some extra tips, some extra things that you can do to add more realism. Now, I stopped at that stage with this painting, but there are other things that you can do. The first one that you can do is watercolour pencils. These are fantastic for grasses, and if your painting is still looking a little bit unnatural, you need even more layering, then watercolour pencil is something that you can do, both wet and dry. And of course, ordinary coloured pencils if you want to, although the watercolour pencil will just sit a little more easily with your watercolour paints. You can use scratching or embossing, but you don't want to do that before you add the masking fluid because it could help adhere it to your paper or even worse, get it to sink into your paper. But after you've taken the masking fluid off, if you want to do some scratching or embossing to your dry paper before you add those last layers of paint, it's going to give you additional texture. Finally, you can use some very subtle opaque colours. So you could use some opaque watercolours, some gouache, or even just get a little bit of titanium white, mix it in with something like a pale yellow, and it will then paint on top of your darks. So again, you can add additional texture to your painting. So if you've reached the same stage as me, still not happy with it, try one of these additional ideas. So do let me know in the comments if you like the painting and uh, if you found any of these techniques helpful. Before you leave this video, don't forget to have a look in the video description. I've got lots of free stuff down there for you. I've got some free downloadable PDFs and also a little watercolour painting course that you can take for no money whatsoever. If you're finding that you're having other problems with masking fluid that aren't covered in this video, things like paper tearing, difficulties knowing what applicator to use, I've got a whole playlist about masking fluid. And I think you'll find my video about masking fluid mistakes especially helpful. You can watch that video right now.